Rabbanim Nifbadim, distinguished guests, my lords, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to congratulate you, Jonathan, together with your team for the outstanding manner in which you are leading and representing our community. Hanukkah and Christmas have a lot in common. They take place more or less at the same time of the year. Both of them commence on the 25th day of the month. Hanukkah commences on the 25th of Kislev in the Hebrew calendar. Both of them are religious festivals, which also are welcomed in a cultural manner. Both of them have special foods associated with them. And this year, there is an added similarity. You see, with regard to Christmas, there is a lead-up period. Parties, special receptions, carols, and so on. But usually we don't have that for Hanukkah. We celebrate it during the festival itself. However, this year, because Hanukkah is so late on account of the fact that this has been a leap year for us, the result is that, unusually, we do have a leading period for the festival of Hanukkah, and that's why we have the candelabra here, but we're not lighting it. At what stage for us does the leading period for Hanukkah start? I would like to suggest it's from the moment you see the first donut in your kosher bakery. <laughs> Now, in this lead-up period to Christmas, there is a wonderful feeling in the country. It's all about giving and sharing and caring. We're identifying those who are in need, those who are impoverished, those who are alone, and we're reaching out to them. And this, too, is a central theme of the festival of Hanukkah. It's a festival of lights, just as Christmas is. And we recognize the power of light. In a very dark room, you can kindle one single candle, and that will provide enough light for people to find their way. One should never underestimate the potential that each and every single one of us has through the light that we can shed within a dark and challenging world. In addition, the Talmud tells a story of a blind man who was walking through the darkness of night, and he was noticed carrying a lantern in his hand. Somebody went up to him and said, what is this all about? And the blind man said, I'm holding this lantern, not so that I should see, but rather so that other people should see me, and they will save me from tripping and falling. It's at this time of the year that we are noticing all those with lanterns in their hands. All those within our society crying out for help. And there's such a marvelous spirit right through our society as we respond to these calls. Therefore, the message of Hanukkah and Christmas is a very timely one. But I would like to suggest that it's such a pity that as soon as the festivals are over, we go back to regular business. And then we wait another year to notice people with lanterns in their hands. Let us therefore dedicate ourselves at this time of the year to guarantee that the Hanukkah and Christmas spirit will stay with us throughout the year. That within our challenging world within which there is a wave of hatred and terror, let everybody who is possible kindle candles, candles of hope, candles of harmony, candles of unity, of tolerance and of peace. You can never underestimate the power that we have in our hands to guarantee that light will indeed prevail over darkness. And let us as well, throughout the entire year, be on the lookout for those with lanterns in their hands in order to make this into a better society. To all our Christian friends, I wish you a happy Christmas. And to our Jewish friends, Hanukkah Sameach.